which I go about setting up this Pathfinder campaign is completely arbitrary, and just goes off of my own personal taste. I love putting battle maps together, so that'll be the first task I jump to. After watching the series, dig into your own campaign in whatever order you wish. Fortunately, I don't need to cram both the tavern and sewer locations in the same play space. Roll20 has the ability to store multiple tabletop spreads in a single campaign. This is where the page toolbar comes into play. Each page represents a unique tabletop spread. Think of it as pages in a book. At default, a Roll20 campaign starts with a single blank page that contains a 25 by 25 unit grid. Since the first thing my players are going to encounter is the tavern, I'll make that my first page. So I'll go ahead and rename it to something more identifiable, like so. If I get out the measurement tool from the toolbox and pull it through the play space, you might note that the diagonals aren't being measured per Pathfinder's rule set. That's because at default, a page is set to Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition measurement system. This isn't a problem though, we just need to change this up in the page settings. There's a lot that you can manage from the page settings window. Roll20 tries to cover a lot of different system options here. For instance, you can turn off the grid entirely, or switch it over to a horizontal or vertical hex grid. For now, I'm going to switch this over to Pathfinder 3.5 under Diagonals, and leave pretty much everything as is. I might need to change the page size later, but I'll play that by ear as I build my tavern. The tabletop has several layers to work from. Most activity happens on the Objects and Tokens layer. It's also the only layer that your players have access to. I'm actually going to switch over to the Maps and Background layer to design my tavern. This layer is a safe place to keep images that you want to stay put. You can drop images from your desktop to the tabletop, or pull them via Roll20's image search. I have a particular image in mind from the Roll20 Marketplace that I want to use for the tavern, so I'm going to pull it up via search. I already know the grid size of this image, so instead of trying to scale this manually, I'm going to use the Set Dimensions tool under the Advanced Image Options to snap it to proper scale. Okay, that's looking pretty sweet. I'm going to tweak the page size a bit so I don't have any more overhang past the tavern map. Within the page settings, you can adjust the page's height and width to whatever size you need for your campaign. There we go. Now we'll need another page for the sewer dungeon crawl. I could create new pages by clicking on the Create New Page button, but then I end up with the default blank page again that's not using Pathfinder settings. Instead, I'm going to click on this button here to duplicate the current page. While this doesn't duplicate the content on the page, it does copy the page's settings, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to set up this page in exactly the same fashion I did the first. I'm going to run a search for the image I want to use and drag it out to the tabletop. Since I know the dimensions of this image as well, I'm going to force its scale via the Set Dimensions option once again. Unlike the previous page, however, I'm going to use more than one image here. The sewer takes two map backdrops instead of one. Since the play space is rather narrow, I'm going to need to return to my page settings again. I'm going to alter the page's dimensions slightly to get it to neatly wrap around my images. I'm also going to add a bunch of prop images on here too, such as barrels, tables, and torches. If you plan to do some extensive interior dungeon design, remember that the Alt key is your friend when moving, rotating, and resizing images on a gridded tabletop. This will prevent images from grid snapping. That goes for any layer you're working on. And there we go! As a GM, I can load any page I want just by clicking on it from the page toolbar. The players, on the other hand, will only view whatever page their bookmark is resting on. If you need to, you can split the party between pages, but I don't think that'll be an issue in this session. And there we have it! Our battle maps are done! Now we're ready to move on to character sheets!